Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be reviewing the Star Wars Battlefront beta. I know it's been a lot of Star Wars content over the last couple days. I've been totally into it. Put about 20 hours into the beta so far at the time of making this video and I'll be playing some more, I'm sure. And first of all, let me say that I am a huge Star Wars fan of the original trilogy. So take that into consideration when you hear my review of the Star Wars Battlefront beta. That being said, as a big fan, I'm going to be quite critical because I want Star Wars Battlefront front to be the best game it possibly can be. Also, before we get into game balance and mechanics, let's talk about what this game is trying to achieve. It's not going to be a hardcore MLG game that we play at competitive tournaments to win millions of dollars in prize money. It's attempting to be not only the most authentic Star Wars gaming experience you can have, but also a highly accessible game to all fans of Star Wars. So imagine a retired gamer who's getting back into the gaming scene because this game looks amazing. Star Wars Battlefront is designed so that novice or rusty gamers can hop in and enjoy themselves from the start. It's not complicated to play, the controls are very simple, and it allows you to literally learn how to do things like fly in seconds. The downside to this is that the simplicity lowers the skill gap to a point where it may not interest highly competitive gamers in the way that, say, Counter-Strike interests them. I'm not stating that this is a bad thing, but just more as factual information of how the game is designed. And really, it's okay for DICE to make a casual game, especially when it's around a franchise that has historically focused more on lore and effects than competition and skill. The competitive gamer in me doesn't like how simple the game has become, but the Star Wars fan in me understands the design choices and is still highly excited to play the full release of this title. Now that being said, if you are a hardcore competitive player, you will still be able to dominate the casual player base that is bound to show up for this game, which is something that I've been doing and having quite a bit of fun with that. Okay, so there's gonna be a lot of good things and a lot of bad things in this review. Let's start off with something that Star Wars Battlefront has done right, authenticity. The Stockholm team has made this game fucking gorgeous. Everything looks like it's right out of the movie, and frankly, that's because it actually is. Not only did they scan the original models from this film to get 100% accurate reproductions, but they also visited the original film locations to photograph and better replicate the environments, like Hoth. Their reimagined Hoth base is simply amazing. The different entry points, the attack paths of the AT-ATs and ATSTs, and the ion cannon placement is great. It fits into the lore perfectly, and even a stickler for detail like myself has a hard time finding flaws in their visual design. The game mode Walker Assault throws you into the most well-known Star Wars battle of all time, the Battle of Hoth. It's every nerd's wet dream to man the trenches as the rebels and hold off the Empire's massive armored assault, or maybe be the guy in the ATAT -AT wreaking havoc on the horribly outmatched rebels. And when you actually get there and start fighting, it feels like you're in the battle so much that you almost forget about the fact that you're playing a horribly imbalanced game mode, almost being the key word there. Once the initial nerdgasm is over and you start to see Star Wars Battlefront as an actual game, you will begin to recognize that a lot of things need to change for it to be a better balanced experience. Now to be fair, DICE has already stated that this is more of a technical test than a balance test and it should play completely different when the final game comes out, but that's not going to stop me from critiquing the design choices as they currently stand. So let's begin. Spawns. Holy shit balls are they bad. Not only can the Empire get behind the rebel spawn locations and just shoot them in the back, but the AT, at often has line of sight over the rebel spawns It can rain down orbital strikes on those locations. What the fuck? Casual or not casual spawn rape has been an ongoing issue for dice games and you would think they might have learned by now. Rebels definitely need a little bit more cover and the Empire shouldn't be able to push all the way up to their spawns on foot. Armor and balance. Yep, the Empire pretty much destroyed the Rebels in the Battle of Hoth and they should have the advantage once again with AT-ATs and ATSTs, but maybe not let the Empire use the Rebel turrets against them. So many times have I jumped into a Rebel turret and racked up 10 plus kills before they figure out what I'm doing. The turrets are actually in way better situations for the Empire than they are the Rebels, giving them crazy good line of sights on rebel spawns and just allowing the Empire to wreak havoc once they get into them. They pretty much need to be locked off to the Empire to have any sense of balance in this game mode. 
Hilltop Camping. So the jump pack that you can equip on any soldier will get you into all kinds of fun little areas, like onto the ion cannon or on top of hills. Perhaps they should create some invisible walls to stop this sort of gameplay. If you can hop on top of any hill in the game, then you destroy the concept of lanes or really map design. Without lanes, you have bad map design and cheap kills. Hilltop access should be denied to improve a lot of the gameplay or at least reduce significantly. How about the vehicles? They are flippin' awful and feel terrible to control. Really, Dice? I didn't expect this coming from you guys, the masters of Battlefield. You've basically created the standard for how vehicles should perform in a multiplayer game, yet Battlefront does it horribly. Now, the idea of strafing down an AT-AT in my X-Wing or Snowspeeder sounds amazing, and if that even worked moderately well, I would be happier than you can imagine. However, once you actually get yourself into this situation in-game, you realize that the controls are so bad that they just fight you on actually having a good time. On PC, the flight controls make you basically choose between insanely high sensitivity so that you can turn fast enough in a dogfight so that you don't die, or low enough sensitivity so that you can actually aim and zero in on ground targets. There's no happy medium there, and this has to be completely revamped. There's also a weird pull on all aircraft that's like an autopilot trying to keep you from diving too low, and it's crazy annoying because you constantly fight it when trying to aim at ground targets. The auto lock on aim is really weird for dogfighting and it doesn't really work well. You kind of have to do this trick by aiming ahead of the aircraft but also lock onto it and I don't even know how to explain it really. You just have to get this weird feeling when dogfighting just to try and land some shots. It's very, very inconsistent and doesn't resemble anything that I like about actual dogfighting. Also, you can't bank the aircraft, they kind of do it on their own and this is definitely a ploy at trying to make flying as simple as it possibly can be, but the problem with this is that sometimes the aircraft gets stuck sideways and then it just looks really weird when you're flying around and you're trying to like aim at stuff while you're at like a 90 degree angle. And then of course there's the fighter spawning, and it's just as bad as the infantry spawning. When you spawn in, it puts you on a straight line flight path right into battle, and you can't move your fighter for a considerable amount of time. In fact, long enough to the point where your enemy can get up behind you and pretty much have a lock on before you're even ready to fly. So you can get shot out of the air before you can do anything. Not to mention the fighter aircraft are able to fly all the way into the enemy team's spawn and just be ready for you. They can have total air domination by just having one or two pilots dedicated to taking down incoming fighters. There's no real ground support to speak of and there's no safety zone to fly back to if you're outnumbered or outmatched. And I think this game should definitely have some sort of automated AA turrets like way back in the spawns that keep the enemy teams from getting too close there and just wrecking you or giving you a good retreat point in case you find yourself just in a bad situation. Let's move on to the ground vehicles. Really only the AT-AT and ATSD, but their aiming in third person is the worst. And I wish they had first person aiming options because your shots never seem to land where you're actually aiming. I would love to have a first person mode that looked like this from the actual movie for the AT-AT. That would be freaking sweet. This is what I wanted when I heard that you could be in the AT-AT. But unfortunately, you're always stuck having a weird camera angle above or below the head. Now, of course, if they made the aiming better with a first person mode, then they would have to balance the weapons in accordance, which shouldn't be too much work. And I'd rather have a more accurate weapon than a more powerful but super inconsistent weapon. Now, how about ATSDs? They kind of suffer from the same effect. I mean, you can do really well with them, but there's nothing more annoying than just continuously shooting at somebody and not having your shots hit because you have a weird third person aiming scheme. Also, the mortars are very hard to predict where they're going, and I think they're also a little bit overpowered. They seem to one-shot kill with splash damage, and you shoot like five of them or something. Uh, just a little bit weird. Also, their lock-on rocket is highly unpredictable and often tracks targets that you're not even aiming at in the first place. I remember hitting a snow speeder while I was streaming. When I was aiming for a turret, the rocket just curved up in the air and took out the snow speeder. So all the weapons and aiming needs tons of balance on the ATSD. Now, Rebel turrets, those things I was talking about earlier, how the Empire shouldn't be able to get into them, well, their aiming is also really bad, and they only give you a third-person aiming mode 
for the turrets, which I don't understand. It's the last thing in this game that I would actually want to see while I'm shooting from it. I can see the turrets all the time. When I get into it, I would like to have a first person aiming mode so that I can actually hit the damn targets I'm aiming for. They really need to give a lot of the vehicles more first person aiming options. Okay, let's move on to a lighter subject, the infantry combat. I actually really enjoy the infantry combat. It's a lot of fun. Sure, the grenade spam is a little bit much. Maybe they could add another three seconds onto the grenade cooldown just so there aren't so many flying through the air all the time. But the gunplay itself is actually a lot of fun. Even if there is no difference between aim down sight and hip fire or a penalty for moving and shooting, it basically inspires fast, aggressive gameplay, which is fun and I like it a lot. Some guns may be better than others, but no seriously gross imbalances at the moment. I don't like the melee attacks though. I feel like players shouldn't have to stop in place when they do a melee attack and it should be a bit closer to the way that the halo melee attack works. I constantly end up missing my swings because my player stops in place to do a gun bash. At the moment, the beta doesn't give you a lot of card combinations to play with, but I can see how the infantry combat could become much more interesting with the addition of different cards since it so drastically changes the way you play your character. Now Drop Zone is a great infantry only game mode. The combat is highly dynamic, team oriented, and a lot of fun. I played with Matimio on Thursday's stream and we started making up callouts for the map and all of a sudden things became quite tactical. And it even worked well when I could only communicate with one other person. Although not quite deep enough to bring out the esports vibe, it still is a great alternative game mode and I can't wait to see how it evolves with more cards and more maps. Infantry power ups are awesome. It's a great system for getting weapons that are frankly overpowered. Want to have an epic one-shot rocket launcher? You can, but you have to find it on the battlefield first. Want to call in an orbital strike that decimates anyone in a giant area? You can, but again, you have to be lucky enough to find it as a power-up. The fact that there is no set spawn location for the powers ensures that people can't camp vehicles or heroes, although I have noticed a few patterns emerge that maybe eventually will lead to people memorizing the power-up spawn rotations. Of course, the best power-ups are the heroes which seem to be limited to one per team at a time and they are badass and can be used to devastating effect when somebody knows what they are doing. Honestly, I don't really have any complaints with the heroes other than occasionally some weird animation glitches, but oh my god, I cannot freaking wait to play as Boba Fett. Now, of course, I can't get through a review, especially a PC review, without talking about the lack of dedicated servers on PC. This is certainly a hot topic for the PC community, but one that I'm surprisingly okay with. Now, there's a lot of pros and cons to not having dedicated servers. First of all, not having dedicated servers means no custom game modes with terrible rules and player accounts, which I consider to be a positive thing. I've played enough Battlefield to know that custom rules can hurt game design and inspire a lot of popular, spammy, point-grinding servers. Screw the Meat Grinder Metro server, screw 64-player Rush, 64-player TDM, and G18 pistol-only servers. If there's a way to get points faster than the standard game modes, then people will do it, whether it's fun or not, and I would be happy to never have to deal with this element in Battlefront. Another pro of non-dedicated servers is no more badmins and less team stacking. Often clan run servers will have an entire team of tryhards wrecking everybody on the other team with no team balance in sight. This can happen in casual servers, but I feel if the auto balancer is even half good, it won't be a big issue, especially since there's no team switching in Star Wars Battlefront. Good job, DICE. I mean it. Let people join on friends, but no more switching to the winning side. Of course, the flip side of no admins is also no immediate action when there's a hacker spotted in a server. And to be fair, there are already hackers in Star Wars Battlefront, but the fair fight system has been ramped up to ban hackers much faster now, and in the 20 hours of playing the beta so far, I haven't seen a single hacker. So far, so good. Now, another downside of non-dedicated servers are not being able to join your favorite map rotation servers whenever you want, not recognizing the same players that you're used to seeing in your favorite servers, and also not being able to pick low ping servers from a server browser. The ping issue really sucks, and the fact that they don't show your ping in game is sort of like saying, hey, there's nothing you can do about it anyway, so why do you need to know that you have a ping of 300? It's sort of an ignorance is bliss approach to ping, which as a PC gamer, I'm highly opposed to. And despite these issues being somewhat important to me, the lack of dedicated servers will not keep me away from playing this game, and on that front, dice you win. As I mentioned at the start, this game is designed to be casual, and dedicated servers don't really fit that game plan. 
From reading through YouTube comments, forums, Reddit posts, it's clear that many players still think this game is somehow going to be Star Wars Battlefield, but DICE is really changing their philosophy on this one in terms of actual game mentality. Almost as if the mantra of this game is, relax man, go shoot some stuff with your blaster pistol and nerd out, which at the moment is enough to get me interested. The question is, will it be enough to keep me playing this game long term, or will the overall casual nature of the game have me bored and looking for something with a little bit more depth. At the moment, I'm still quite addicted to the game and having put 20 plus hours into two different game modes so far tells me that I'm probably gonna sink at least a couple hundred hours into the final release of this game, if not more. So that pretty much wraps it up for my review of the Star Wars Battlefront beta. And as always, a beta does not necessarily represent the final product. So many things can and probably will change when we see the final release. As always guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap. Signing off.